الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه وجاهد في الامه وكشف الله به الغمه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعاذنا الله واياكم من النار يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد All praise is due to Allah who we seek his help we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge from Allah We seek refuge from Allah from whatever evil our heart conceals and from the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grant guidance will never be led astray and whoever he leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his slave, servant and messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he deserve to be feared and die not, except in a status of Islam, in a status of submission, submission to one God, Allah Almighty. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this wonderful, beautiful deen that is Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the rules and regulations by the name of Sharia ah, that is coming from Quran. So also we are blessed with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives us all these rules and regulations what to do and what not to do. And one of the main thing in Sharia is what? One of the main rule? لا ضرر ولا ضرار That you don't harm yourself and you don't harm the others. لا ضرر ولا ضرار Don't harm yourself and don't harm others. Now we have to understand this very well. And allow me to mention to you a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is narrated in Muslim Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith Al-Aynu Haq Al-Aynu Haq The influence of an evil eye is a fact The evil eye is truth Al-Aynu Haq ولو كان شيء سابق القدر لا سبقته العين. If anything would precede the destiny of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the قدر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, it would be the influence of an evil eye. So you can imagine, brothers and sisters, how dangerous the evil eye is, and how bad the evil eye is. And I would like to go a little deeper about the evil eye. It says 
In Sunan Ibn Majah, the hadith says that one of the companion Amr, he was walking and he passed by another companion by the name of Sahel. And he saw him, that Sahel taking back. So what Amr said, he said, I have never seen beautiful skin except this one. He saw the skin of Sahel. Immediately, right away, Sahel fell down. Subhanallah. Out of nowhere. Amr said, so beautiful skin. And next second, Sahel fell down, unconscious. The Sahaba took Sahel to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said the whole incident. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith that, who do you think? Who do you think that did that? They said, Allahu Alam, but we saw Amr passing by and he said his word and immediately Sahel fell unconscious. Then look what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, why would any one of you kill his brother? Why any one of you would kill his brother? If you see anything that pleases you in your wealth, in your children, in yourself, or to the brother, make dua for him. Say, MashaAllah. Say, Tabarakallah. Make dua for yourself and for the other person if you see something good in that person. Make dua for him. Not only that, it says in a hadith that authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah, he says, The evil eye takes person to the graveyard. That means the evil eye can kill a person. The evil eye can kill a person. So, how, why are we talking about evil eye? What is, what is about evil eye? As the Prophet said in this part of our belief that we have to believe in al ayn the evil eye, it's the fact. And it comes from a person to the other, another person. Knowingly and unknowingly. With feeling and without feeling. If the person is not mentioning Allah in his talk, then the evil eye is a fact and it will hit the other person. So it's a serious issue, respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Every one of us here, sitting here, Allah blessed all of us with lot, lots of ni'am. Lots of ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Every one of us. Alhamdulillah, we are working, we have children, we have wife, we have car, we have food. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can imagine, He blessed us with. The problem is that, you know, we share everything, the major or the minor, to everyone. About ourselves. This is the problem, sharing everything to everyone. And it's only one problem that we have, the disaster that we are involved in, showing off. You take it or you leave it, but this is the fact, showing off, majority of the people, they are showing off. Showing their watch, showing their mobile, showing their car, showing their, you know, being proud of, of their work. <coughs> you will find a person saying that, you know, I get so and so salary, and every year I get incentive, and every half year I get bonus, and I get ticket for my family and myself every year. And out of sudden, a few days after, you will find this person is fired from his work. Out of no reason. This is Ayn. You will find people that say, MashaAllah, that sometimes, even if you say, MashaAllah, the second person, the other person should say, MashaAllah. So let's say if a person, a parent, will say that, you know, I had wonderful son, wonderful children, they come first every year in their class, my son got trophy, my daughter got this and that, and second year you will find their result and their marks going down. And then you say, what's happened to them? Because of you. Showing off. Telling everyone that, you know, this has happened to me, and I have this, and I have that, and this is the problem. Not only that, respected brothers and sisters. On daily basis, what's happening to us, we are just telling everyone. Before you eat, you click a picture of your food, and you update it. Your Facebook, your Twitter, your WhatsApp, your profile, I'm eating this and this. Before you go to the mall to buy something, you click a picture of the mall that I'm going so and so mall. Before you buy a t-shirt or a pen, you take a picture of it, I'm buying this and you're sharing it with the whole world. 
Imagine from the other side there are people don't have, don't have money. They don't have money to eat something. They don't have anything to buy in many, many years and you're buying every week, every month. So don't you think when they are looking at these updates and these pictures of yours, your family, their chest will not burn? And you will be the victim of evil eye. Because of all these updates. Very important message to the couples, newly married or all those are married before. Taking pictures, selfies with the whole family, with the children and husband and wife and putting it as a status, as a profile picture on WhatsApp or whatever. And after a few days you will find that, you know, husband and wife involved into a big fight. There's no understanding between husband and wife. Newly engaged people, you know, showing their rings in the pictures. And then after some time, there's nothing, there's no engagement, there's no marriage anymore. This is all because of ourselves. We are inviting others to come and give us an evil eye. This is very serious issue, respected brothers and sisters in Islam. We expose ourselves to the people. Come, I'm inviting you to give me an evil eye. And this is the fact every one of us ha facing this problem. I would like to share with you a story a true story happened in one of the Muslim countries, in Arab countries. A young girl just about to get married in a week. She received lots of gifts from groom and the family of the groom. Necklace, jewelry, rings, shoes, bags, clothes, whatever you think. Mashallah, they are well to do, so they are sending the gifts. What she did, she clicked the picture of this and that and all the gifts and she uploaded them to Twitter. The second day, the second day the whole house got burned. The second day. And I saw the picture of the gifts by myself and I saw the picture of the house that's completely black, out of burn. And the lady, the girl, she got crazy. She lost her senses and she's in one of the hospital getting treatment. Why? Why people? She's of course out of happiness. They, she's doing all this but from the other side there are how many girls not getting even a proposal for marriage? Right? So we are the one who's exposing ourselves to the others and can't give us an evil eye. We are just a human being, normal Bashar, normal human being. Imagine one of the Anbiya, he was afraid from an evil eye. Ya'qub alayhi salam, it's mentioned in Surah Yusuf. Ya'qub alayhi salam, he was blessed with 12 children. And while he was sending his children to Egypt to bring food, what he said? All of you, he said to his, uh, to his son, all of you do not enter from one gate while you're getting inside the palace. Don't enter from one gate, spread yourself. Two from here, three from here, two from here. So the people will not look at you that you are all brothers. Twelve brothers is something really blessed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And beside that, they are not from Egypt, they are from the other place. They look good, they look smart, they look handsome. So the Prophet of Allah, Ya'qub alayhi salam, he commended his own children that when you get into Masr, spread yourself. So the people will not hit you with the evil eye. This is the status of Nabi. Why we are showing up? We have to cut this down. Change the profiles. Don't put everything that happened to you. You just share it with everyone. Share it. We don't say don't share it. It's forbidden. Share it with those that are cl close to you. You trust them. They are very beloved to you. You know that they love for you for sake of Allah. Go share with them. That's completely fine. That's completely fine. <coughs> So respected brothers and sisters, I would advise myself and all of you to remember Allah all the time and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us protected from the evil eye and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us protected from the evil of human and evil of the jinn.
الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبيه المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ونصاب على نهجه المقتدى وعلى أهله المتفى Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Now we know what is the evil eye and how the effect of evil eye is so dangerous in the community, in ourselves an evil eye can hit a person, can hit an animal and can hit a metal. It doesn't matter. It just goes and destroys that whatever that evil eye is going to. So how to protect ourselves, respected brothers and sisters, from evil? How to protect? Okay, now we know what's evil eye and how it can affect each other. How to protect ourselves from evil eye? Two things. One, if you see something good according to the hadith that we mentioned, if you see something good, you say, MashaAllah. You make dua for the person. May Allah bless you with it. May Allah bless this job. May Allah give you the barakah of your car. May Allah give you the you know, blessings of so and so thing. But this is you, right? What about if you are blessed with a lot of things and the other person is not saying MashaAllah to you? What if a person is giving presentations and talks and he is all the time going and meeting a lot of people like this? And, of course, he's, 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 used to, he's used to say MashaAllah, but he cannot go to everyone and tell them that say MashaAllah, say MashaAllah, say MashaAllah. That cannot be possible. It happens most of the time when family goes to the gathering, to the wedding, to some places with the children. When they come back, you will find the children, they are crying whole life. It happens with everyone. The, the children, they are not stopping, continuously crying they have been hit from the evil eye. So what to do? Now you cannot go to the whole hall people and then tell them, say MashaAllah because you saw my kid. Say MashaAllah because I'm wearing this. Say MashaAllah because of... You cannot say that. So number one, of course, you make dua for the one you think that MashaAllah, Allah be blessed with so and so person and may Allah bless him, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. But what about the others? How they will say MashaAllah to you? If they don't say, you have to protect yourself by yourself and that's very easy. That's very easy. The Prophet ﷺ told us there is something called Afkar al-Sabah and Afkar al-Masa. Afkar in the morning and Afkar in the evening. And also it's very easy to get them. Now all of you, or majority of you have in the smartphones. You can go and download Afkar al-Sabah. Just write Afkar al-Sabah in one of the you know, uh, YouTube uh, search engines and it will come and download it and Afkar al-Masa, the evening Afkar, and download it. They will take only 20 minutes to, you can hear them, and you can repeat them, and after a few days, mashallah, you will be memorizing them. Easy. Every time you are going from work, from home to work, at least you drive for 10 to 15 minutes, Afkar will take 10 to 15 minutes. While you're coming back at Asr time, you can read and recite and listen to the Afkar al-Masa. After Asr, that's considered as an evening time. So while coming, you can listen to the Afkar al-Masa. And in between, if you're going somewhere, and if you forget, you can read them anytime. But something very important that we can do is reading Al-Fatiha. And everyone knows Al-Fatiha. Reading Ayat Al-Kursi, Allahu La Ilaha, the, till the end of the ayah. And reading, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. And blow on yourself. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And you can read this on yourself, and you can blow it on your children and on your wife, family members. So this is, in this case, they are protected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these afkar. Simple things to do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this easy for us to implement it in our, in our daily life. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us guided. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the track of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين